Did you know that if you miss two days of kindergarten in September, you are on the fast track to dropping out of high school? This research was presented to me at a meeting one time, and I of course needed to look up the whole study because it seemed pretty intense of a message to be sharing. So. I found the study and I have it summarized and reviewed for you today. Well, hi there, I'm Courtney. Welcome to my channel where we discuss educational research one study at a time so that you can incorporate it into your practice. So today's study is about chronic absence. It is titled, Data Matters, Using Chronic Absence to Accelerate Action for Student Success. Grab a cup of tea or coffee if you drink that stuff, have a seat and we'll chat together. Or if you're truly in the classroom right now, you can just listen to this while you sweep up all the crumbs off the floor and rearrange desks and wipe down the boards and all that great stuff. Your time is precious. I won't be offended if you don't actually watch my face while we have these chats. Let's backtrack and talk about why are researchers looking at chronic absence? Why did chronic absence come up as a topic in this meeting? In the United States, which is not where I teach, there is a law called ESSA, E-S-S-A, so Every Student Succeeds Act. Each state in the United States had to pick five indicators for student success. Four of them had to be academic and then one could be something else. And so a bunch of states chose chronic absence as the thing that they were gonna use as an indicator of whether a school was doing well or not doing well. What is chronic absenteeism? The authors define chronic absenteeism as missing 10% of your schooling, which is the equivalent of two days a month or 18 days in a school year. So since these states started tracking chronic absence and had a working definition of what chronic absence was, all of this research could come out because now we have data that we're actually looking at. And so in a nutshell, what the data showed is that there are negative aspects associated with chronic absence. In the early years, the biggest thing is that if students aren't in school, they're less likely to be present for really important instruction such as reading instruction. If you wanna know more about effective reading instruction, I will link a video up here for you. If they're missing whole language, who cares? If they're in a rich program where they're learning how to read and they're missing school, then they're going to miss out on reading. And that has a cumulative effect over the years, right? If you can't read in kindergarten or grade one when you're supposed to kind of learn that skill, then in grade two, three, four, five, six, when it gets harder and harder and the assumption is that you can read for all these other subjects, you're gonna be behind there too. If you can't read your science textbook, you're gonna struggle. If you can't read the word problems in math, you're going to struggle. And so the early years does provide a lot of opportunities for students in terms of their learning, but they need to be present for it because the foundations are being built. Now, when this research was first presented to me in my head, I kept thinking, I bet SES is a problem. I bet SES is a variable. I bet SES is a factor. Lo and behold, it is. Now, of course, like many issues that we come across in school, students who experience inequities in other aspects of their life are going to be hit harder by being chronically absent and the negative effects are going to be magnified for them in terms of their learning. So in this study, they noted students who, are, who have chronic illness, students who live in poverty, students who have disabilities, students who are homeless or who have frequent moves tend to be in that group where experiencing chronic absence is magnified for them and their learning is much more affected in a negative way because of it. None of these issues scream bad parent alert. It's not like parents are saying, oh, I'm just not gonna send my kid to school and I guess they're gonna fail in school. There are some real barriers to accessing education. People don't choose to have a chronic illness. People don't choose to be living in poverty or to be homeless or to have to move frequently. So this is not a parents need to change what they're doing situation. This is very much a systems issue. The authors are very, very clear in saying that this is a systems issue. This is not an individual issue. The reasons why people are not going to school while also experiencing negative effects are because of a system problem. We know that starting from when we've been looking at chronic absence in the United States and tracking it, 
that chronic absence is existing and that there's problems with it that people are experiencing, but we don't have long-term data to say that it's been on the rise or anything like that. What the data does show though, is that it is pretty widespread. So if we're just looking at a snapshot of what chronic absenteeism looks like and how prevalent it is, it is quite prevalent. Here's some data that is a little bit concerning to me. In the United States, over half of the nation's chronically absent students are found in less than a quarter of the nation's schools. So chronic absence is a concentrated issue, which means there's probably some equity issues taking place on a wider level. What the researchers also noticed was in every single state in the United States, there was chronic absenteeism. So it wasn't just some states had it, some states didn't. It existed in every state and it existed on a significant level. So what they used to define that was that 10% or more of students were chronically absent. The researchers also noted that in 58% of schools, at least one in 10 students was chronically absent. It's not just that some students aren't going to school in some places, it's that in some places, many students aren't going to school. The authors also noted that schools that serve students in special education or alternative education or vocational education have higher prevalence of chronic absenteeism. So these are schools that don't use the integrated model. They would be a special school designed to meet the needs of a certain subset of students who are typically experiencing educational disparities in one way or another. The authors do note though that this finding shouldn't just be students who have disabilities and go to these schools are more likely to be absent. The data doesn't show a direction. There could be a different variable that hasn't been looked at yet. It could be that the schools are doing something that isn't meeting the needs of students to get to them. It could be that the students are predisposed to not going to school. There's no information on that yet. Schools that have higher levels of poverty are also more likely to have higher concentrations of students that have chronic absenteeism and extreme chronic absenteeism. So there is a poverty absentee connection there. When schools had 75% or more of students living in poverty, they tended to have much higher rates of chronic absenteeism. When schools had 25% or less of their students living in poverty, they tended to not experience chronic absenteeism in high rates. The authors also explain that not every school that had high concentrations of students in poverty had high rates of chronic absenteeism. So it's wise to look at these schools that don't experience chronic absenteeism, but do experience students being in high poverty to see if there's something the schools are doing that is making it more accessible for students to get to school every day. It could be that there's something happening in the community. It could be that the school has taken a concerted effort to bring students into the school. So that is worth exploring as well. One of the really interesting things that was talked about in this study is predictors of what makes a student chronically absent. And interestingly enough, the best predictor of whether or not a student will be chronically absent is if they've been chronically absent in the past. So it tends to not be a sporadic thing in a student's life. It tends to be sort of a way of life for students. So they're either a chronically absent student or they're not. And this makes sense because People don't tend to experience poverty for just a short stint of their life. There certainly are cases like that, but when we're talking about systemic issues of inequity and inequalities, there tends to be sort of a, a long-term experience that people have, unless we would change our policy and actually do something about it. All right, so what can we do about this? Well, if you are a policymaker or administrator, then listen up. If you're a classroom teacher or an educator in some capacity, stick around too, because there are things that you can do as well. So the first thing is to track the absences by the school, figure out who these students are that are missing school so that you know what you're working with. Then the next thing to do is to make sure that there's a team responsible for absenteeism. The next thing to do is to engage parents, families, staff members, and community partners so that we can work together to solve this problem because remember it's a systems issue so if students aren't going to school because they don't like their teachers maybe teachers need to reflect on what their daily interactions with each student are do students feel welcomed in your classroom or do they feel like they don't belong do students get ridiculed if they come back to school after being sick and it seems like there's a lot of work to do or do we welcome them back in and help them make up for the work that they've missed 
in the community. Is there an issue with high turnover in rental housing? Maybe we have to lobby municipal governments so that landlords aren't able to throw out families in the middle of a school year. I'm not quite sure what the solution is there, but if we know what the problem is in your school because you've collected data, then you can work to really figure out some solutions. The next thing that is suggested is to look for bright spots. So look for schools that should be experiencing chronic absenteeism because they have many things in common with students that do experience chronic absenteeism, but for whatever reason, kids are coming to those schools and see if you can figure out why that might be the case and then copy what they're doing if it's working. Another thing to do is to use the data to assess the need for other resources that the community might be able to provide so that again, we can come together and help students. And then finally, incorporate attendance goals to help meet the needs of school improvement plans and to have some indicators of when it's important to enact strategies. So what you'll notice is that this article did not say, hey, the minute a kid is not showing up for a certain amount of time, you should send a threatening letter and expel them from school. That would be a more individual approach. This research is really saying chronic absenteeism isn't students just not coming to school because they don't feel like it or their parents don't want to send them. There are real reasons why people can't make it to school, don't feel like they belong in the school, prioritize something else over going to school. And so we can't solve this on an individual level if it's not an individual problem. Having an equity lens for the win. See, it always comes back to equity. If we just adopt an equity lens, we can solve a lot of these problems. Now I'm gonna give you just a brief take on this research from my perspective. This study was reported in the pre-COVID remote learning times. Do you remember that world where we could just go to school every day into a physical building and if students didn't go, we just villainized them and threatened them and told them that they weren't doing a good job. Just times, wasn't it? My hope as an educator is that we can use what we've learned through remote learning to help bridge some gaps here. So if students have to miss school for various reasons, maybe they are moving, maybe they have an appointment that keeps them physically away, but they're well enough emotionally, physically, um, mentally to be participating in school, then perhaps now that we all have remote learning infrastructures in place, we could have things set up so that students don't fall quite as far behind when they have to miss school. Of course, this will have to be balanced against creating a situation where students feel encouraged to miss school. Uh, for example, if it's really easy to access all of the information online, perhaps we might see a rise in students taking more vacations or taking extracurriculars during the school day. And so that'll have to be weighed out. I personally would err on the side of making school accessible for students. Now, my assumption would be, and again, this is not based on research, this would just be my assumption using what I know about equity and access to education, is that the students who need to be in the classrooms most in order to not experience such a huge disparity in their education when they miss school are not the same students who are going on family vacations and taking extracurriculars. Those students, I think, probably have a home life that is supportive to, to catching up, whereas students who are living in poverty, moving all the time, experiencing chronic illness, don't necessarily have the same opportunities to catch up on missed days. And so I would err on the side of providing resources to people to help them and catch those kids instead of spending my time worrying about if people will abuse the system by going on a vacation. But that's just my opinion. So my final message to you is to take chronic absenteeism seriously, but to understand that it is not an individual situation. It is not just people deciding that they don't like school and they're not going to go. And to really look at how we can nurture attendance in schools from a systems level. As a teacher, let's make our classroom welcoming and let's set up systems so that when students do have to miss school, they don't miss the learning that can take place. As administrators, let's make sure that we're tracking attendance and making sure that we know which students are missing and when and why and how and from a board level and a ministry level or a department level, I'm not sure what it's called in other countries, that we are looking at what we can do in the wider community to really help 
students come to school. Okay, well that's all I have for you today. I, I know that if you are in remote learning, chronic absence isn't probably a huge thing on your radar right now, but my hope is that one day schools will open and we'll all be able to go there and we can start taking this issue seriously again. Maybe this video will help manifest. Just kidding, I don't have any research to support whether or not manifesting actually contributes to causal outcomes related to absenteeism. Well, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, so that YouTube sees this video as valuable and can send it out to more educators. Small steps can make a big difference for this channel and for making sure that research can be brought to the forefront for educators in an accessible way. Have a great day, bye.